one thing and stop right there I dare you if you have so many reasons there ought to be at least one reason 
in this place that you can rejoice. But I don't know about you, but when I start rejoicing, when I start counting my blessings, yeah, he say, name them one by one. I dare you to try to thank you for one thing. When I thank you for one thing, it leads to another thing. And I just keep on. I said, just keep on. Thanking him. I have so many. Folks got so many won't say a mumbling word. So many won't even wave your hand. So many reasons won't even cast your hand. So many reasons won't even stomp your feet. So many reasons won't even nod your head. If you got so many reasons, why don't you? You ought to feel a little better now. I, I really need to move on. All you got to do, think about what the Lord has already done. Every one of us in here should have been dead in our grave but the law but the law it's a good time Just think about what he has done for you some of you been to hell and back. You won't even thank the Lord for bringing you through. Really, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I need to take your time. Psalm three. Have I prayed yet? Oh God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Psalm number three. Verses one and two. Psalm three. Verses one and two. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. For a few moments, I want to talk about the minority report. Well, the minority uh -huh. report. I want to uh, introduce to us the word sila. Uh -huh. <laughs> psalm 3 is the first psalm uh -huh. that records the mystery word or the this mysterious word. It's mysterious because it's right there, uh -huh. but we've always been trained, I've always learned, you don't read that. Uh, it occurs three times in the psalm. Uh -huh. 
following verse 2, verses 2, 4, and 8. And 71 times in the book of Psalms. It is generally agreed uh, that Selah is a musical notation. But no one knows what it is meant to indicate. It may be call, uh, a call to sing or play louder, or it may call to stop playing in order to think about what is being said in the song. The tone, the content, and background of the psalm argue for the latter as there's much here to stop and think about. The historical background of the psalm is recorded in 2 Samuel chapters 13 through 18. David's son Amnon raped his half-sister Tamar. In defense of his sister's honor, Absalom, the other son, killed his brother Abnon and then started insurrection against his father yes. David That's right. because of Absalom's good looks, charisma, and shrewdness, and long hair. Many people forsook David and joined the revolt. Finally, David had no choice but to run to Jerusalem. And it was during this exile that David wrote the psalm. Yes, Not only did his father love him, but the entire nation of Israel loved Absalom. And that was a the problem. They loved David, but they also loved Absalom. As a people who were following a ruler, they, they had divided loyalties. And the problem was you can only have one king at a time. The Bible declares that you can't serve or love two masters at the same time. Uh, for you will wind up loving one and hating the other. Absalom, David's son, spent his time looking like and acting like he was serving King David. But he was also spreading seeds of bitterness at the same time. Four years later, Absalom decided to declare himself the king of Israel. In other words, he made up his mind that uh, he decided, I'm now the king. And he started a revolt in Hebron. As King David was chased out of Jerusalem. He, he, he escaped from Absalom and his armies and found a hiding place just beyond the Jordan River. His son was against him. Much of his kingdom was against him. His army was now against him. And somewhere just Beyond the Jordan River, it was nobody but David and the Lord. Servants gone, maids gone, palace gone. It was down to nobody but David and the Lord. Now, let, let me pause. Now, now no, no matter how bad your situation is, if, if it puts you in a position. Where it's nobody but you and the Lord. Good God. You, you, you're in a good situation. Have you ever been through trouble? Trouble has a way of e either stripping away those things that were once important to you. Or it has a way of taking your attention away from it. David finds himself no longer worried about his kingly apparel. He's no longer worried about his own financial portfolio. He, he's no longer worried about his favorite sports team 
or even worried about the publication of his next song. The songster of Israel had the blues. The man after God's own heart was at a place in his life when it seems that God had turned his back on him. So David complains here in verses 1 and 2. David brought his complaints to the Lord. Let me, let me say that David brought his complaints to the Lord. First, first l l l listen to what David says in his prayer to God. L Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. D D David does something. Yeah, D David does something in his trouble. He goes to God and tells him his perception or his understanding of what he believes is going on. Now, this doesn't mean that God doesn't know what's going on because God is all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing. But, 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 but David said that I, 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 I need to be up front with God in my prayer, I, I, I can't shuck and jive with God. I need to open my heart and talk to him. See, see, in praying to God, before you open your mouth, open your heart. And when you open your heart, your mouth. Lord, Lord, Lord the great God. Lord, the absolute God, Lord, the, 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 the divine God. Before we move on, I, I need to tell you that if you have to vent about your trouble and you need to talk with somebody about what you're going through, talk to God. Heard him right say, I, I must tell Jesus. All of my troubles. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. This, the, the, the great news about God is that he hears you whenever, wherever, and however you call him. He's available 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Never closed for holidays. Never on vacation. Always available. Always waiting for you. Always able to help you. David says that this crowd that is against him is not a small gathering. It's a large crowd. And, he, and even though God blessed Israel under David's leadership, there's always somebody who's against everything and everybody. No leader in his or her right mind should be under the impression that everybody is for you. Amen. Especially those of us who lead the people of God. We need to, we need to understand that everybody is not going to see your vision. Follow your vision. Or submit to leadership. D -D David basically says, like, I, I, look, I, I knew all of that. I knew everybody wasn't submissive. But now that there's a number that I can't even number. All I know is that they have become great in size. And they have their own agenda. Lord, their agenda is to trouble me. Their agenda is to bother me. Let, let, let me pause here. Be very careful. Uh, don't let, just because folks talk to you, don't let folks get in your head. 
if they get to your head, it'll get to your heart. Don't, 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 don't let folks get in your head. That, that, that's why you got to be careful what you listen. You got to be careful who. You got to be careful what. You listen to. David suggests that they are troubling the government. They are troubling the state. They are troubling my civic and social programs. No, they are coming after me personally. Have you ever had people on your job to go after you personally? They respect the position. They go after you personally. Have you ever had a child go after you personally? They call you mama and daddy, but they go after you personally. Absalom didn't want to be just a king. He wanted to kill the man who had the job already. He wanted to discredit and destroy the man who had the God assigned position already. Remember, when David became king, God put him there. He fired Saul and he elevated David. The problem with Absalom is that he couldn't wait for the Lord. And so he decided to move what God had put in place. And whenever you seek a position that God has not put you in or that you are not ready to assume, be careful. For the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. Understand in every Promotion in every elevation, uh, there is sacrifice. Uh, you may not be ready to make the sacrifice that comes with the elevation. Right. 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 Secondly, David says, Many are they who rise up against me. Again, not 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 the kingdom, but me personally. David says that something has happened in the kingdom. He says, in essence, uh, they weren't always like this. But something has happened to their character. They ran him out of the city. David said it wasn't a couple of folk. Uh, it, it was many folk. But what David forgot is that God still sees. God still hears. God still knows. And sometimes what we think is a lot of folk, God says they may be big to you, but they're just grasshoppers to me. One of the tricks of the devil is to confuse you and mix you up in order to change your thinking about your circumstances. He'll make you think everybody is against you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everything is against you. Even the same people who support you. The devil will try to make you think that there's no way out and that all of your praying and trusting God is in vain. Yeah, the, 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 the devil wants you to hang on to the possibilities of the bleakest of outcomes. God can grant you a vision of the possibilities of the future. And the devil will come along and paint the darkest, scariest situation he can come up with. If you're sick, God says, I'm a healer and a way maker. The devil says, you ain't going to make it. Right. If you have lots of bills, 
If you have more bills than money, God says, trust me to work it out. The devil says you might as well give up. If you have family problems, God says this is only for a season. But the devil says things will never get better again. Yeah, no, 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 no matter how many people say negative stuff about you, you have to handle it with the word of God. The word of God can outshout, outrun, outpace any negativity from anybody, any group, any mob, any pack. You got the honest manual. You got to read it in order to survive in this mean old cruel old world. What good to have it in your glove compartment? What good to have it in your pocket? What good to carry it around and don't know what's in it? There are things we're praying for and he's already written a letter and answered us. Thirdly, because we really don't want to keep you too long here. David's heart was broken by what his enemies were doing to him. Listen, David's heart was broken by what his enemies were doing to him. But look what happens. But his broken heart was stepped on by the news of what the enemies were saying about him. David says that those same folk that have turned against me, many of these same rebels have already written my eulogy. They have written their report about me and my soul. They, 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 they say of my soul that part of me that you can't see from the outside. They, 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 they say of my soul that part of me that is deep down under the flesh. They say of my soul that part of me that thinks, feels, wills, and desires. They say of my soul that there is no help for him in God. Well, I come by to tell you, the enemy always has something to say. Yeah. If you're looking for the enemy to be quiet, mm -hmm. you forget that. For the enemy always has something to say. Yes, the snake has something to say to Eve. Yeah. Cain had something to say to Abel. Pharaoh had something to say to Moses. Goliath had something to say to David. Nebuchadnezzar had something to say to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Delilah had something to say to Samson. The prophets of Baal had Something to say to Elijah. The devil had something to say to Jesus in the wilderness. Agrippa had something to say to Paul. But in the text, David says that the enemy has had something to say. I need to tell you, in this day and time, the devil, the enemy, still has something to say. The devil will say, God is not real. Uh, you say, you're wasting your time in church. You ought to stop all of that embarrassing shouting. I need to move on, but let me pause right there. You see, if they really knew, yeah, what you had been through. Hell on. 
If they knew, yeah, where you were, yeah, before the Lord brought you in this house, if they really knew the hell you went through, hey, Lord, yeah, but see, they'll tell you, you ought to stop going to church and praising the Lord. Let me pause again. That's what I like about on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. If you hadn't thought about the Lord on those other days, when you get in the Lord's house, it ought to make you think about how blessed, yeah, Lord, and how the Lord has been keeping you. Hey, Lord, the devil will tell you things will never get better. Hey, Lord, he'll tell you you ought to give up and give out. David said that his enemies uh, say that there's no help, no salvation, no protection from any hurt, harm, and danger. Nobody can help him now. I come by to tell you my prospect. The devil has been watching you and your life. Uh, and your family I come by to tell you he's after you he want to destroy your life he's after your family uh, yes he is if mm, he could cause trouble and chaos in the family uh, it'll be in our schools it'll be in our churches uh, matter of fact uh, if Satan can get you if he can get in your life, uh, if he can get in your family, he don't even have to show up on Sunday morning because uh, he sent um, some representatives. Yeah, Lord. Uh, yeah, Lord. Uh, yeah, you've had some ups uh, and downs. Talk me up in here. Anybody uh, ever had uh, any ups uh, and downs? Mm, you mm, have had some tears mm, in you felt, yeah, all by yourself. Mm, and the devil said, uh, nobody can help him now. Good God Almighty. David said uh, that his enemies uh, saying uh, he can't uh, get victory now. His enemies saying he has nobody to grant mm, him power. His enemies saying that even God can't help you now. Even God can't save you now. I need to move on, but I need to tell you ain't nowhere uh, you can go and the Lord won't be able to put his hands on you no matter what you do I can't help how low down and dirty and yeah Lord it was I come by to tell you the Lord he can put his hand on you you are not too dirty you are not too vile you are not too low down yeah you may they think you a bully, but the Lord, hey Lord, he can put a chain on your collar, huh? yeah Lord, yeah Lord, no matter huh, what the situation is, the Lord, he's able, huh? and he will, huh? he will, but oh Lord, this is where I want to get to, huh? then David writes, see Lord, Good God am I what you're saying uh, every now and then we need to stop stop the music distract what's around us every now and then we need to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord see uh, stand still uh, stand still uh, and listen Listen, I got a feeling if you listen, he might be calling you by your name. 
if you listen, he might be giving you instructions uh, um, to take another step forward. Uh, hello, Sila, stand still. Uh, Sila, hush and pay attention. Uh, Sila, calm yourself down. Uh, take a deep breath uh, and don't let the devil get in you. Say something that you regret. Uh, do something that you will regret. Uh, yeah, Lord, David is saying, uh, yeah, Lord, there is another report yet to be heard. Uh, in other words, it ain't over yet. Uh, yes, uh, I've taken my complaint to the Lord yes I've taken my issues to the Lord I wonder is there anybody up in here when the last time you took your issues not your mama not your daddy but you took your issues to the Lord to the Lord to the Lord Hello, when you consider what the enemy has said over David's life, when you consider what the enemy has said over your life, when you consider what the enemy has said over your family's life, when you reflect on what David said, you need to hurry over to what he wrote a few songs later. David said he wrote uh, that the Lord is my shepherd uh, and I shall not want this is David saying uh, yeah escape uh, my escape uh, is like a bird out of the net of the fowl the same David wrote oh taste and see that the Lord is good you see when you complain to the law be sure that you know the law let me say it again yeah law before you complain to the lord uh, be sure that you know the law see if you complain and don't know the law you're just blowing off steam uh, and matter of fact you don't want no resolve to your issue i found out that some folks they want to stay mad they want to stay upset they don't want to resolve the issue but i come by to tell you to every problem that is a solution oh bless his name hello 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 David testified and that's why every now and then you gotta testify you gotta be a witness the Lord is looking for somebody to be a witness here David is complaining about his enemies but he saying oh take Hello, hello, oh taste and see that the law is good. Hello, if you're eating uh, something good and it's sure enough good, if you want uh, to share it with somebody else in order for you to convince them that it's good, you got to taste it yourself. Then you can testify the law the Lord, the Lord, he's good, ain't he good? Hello, hello, hello. I've come to tell somebody uh, that if the plan of Absalom and his army had succeeded, David would not have been able uh, or alive to write those words. Uh, and he would have not been alive to write new words I've come to tell somebody don't let the noise of the enemy stop you don't let the noise of the enemy stop you from praising God don't let the noise of the enemy speak death unto your life because God is able God is able, God and his body, so yeah, he's able, he's able, he's able, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah, Lord, he's able, he's able, God is able, even when the enemy thinks that the Lord won't help you. And I need to tell you, if the Lord can't help you, you can't be helped. Good God Almighty, uh, don't let mm, the enemy uh, realize uh, that God is able. Even when the enemy say you look like you're suffering uh, what you, from what you've done, uh, God is able. Even when the enemy thinks you're too far from a breakthrough, uh, God is able. Even when the enemy uh, think mm, you're too weak to fight, but I heard old man Paul say, "When I'm weak, good God Almighty, then uh, am I strong? God is able. Even when the enemy has planned your destruction, uh, he's planned your demise. But I come by." to tell somebody I, I've come by to remind some others that God all by himself he gives the victory my victory is in Christ Jesus my victory is in my Lord in my Savior my victory yeah yeah is there any Everybody here knows uh, that your money can't do it. Uh, your friends uh, can't do it. The things you have can't do it. No, Lord, when trouble strikes, mm, uh, when trouble comes, uh, yeah, Lord, you have two choices. Either turn from God or turn to God. I don't know about him, but I choose God to make a way. I choose God to make my enemies behave. I choose God to give me strength. I choose God to give me joy. I choose God to wake me up in the morning. I choose God to be my shelter in a time of a storm. I choose God to fight for me when I can't fight for myself. When you think you can't make it, when you think you're too weak to fight, when you think that you outnumber, if you just hold on, If you just hold on, hold on, ah, hold on, in your holding on, trust, trust, trust in the Lord. While you're holding on, you gotta trust in the Lord, for after a while, I, I won't have to hold on anymore. He'll grab me by my hand. He may not come. He may not show up when you want him to. was day. Friday talked with Saturday. Saturday told him he was still dead. Friday celebrated on Saturday. But then an emergency call came from Sunday to Friday and said something happened in the graveyard. I know Jesus died on Friday. I know they buried him Friday. I heard Saturday say he was still in the grave. But early this morning, he got the victory. 
He got up! The victory. Don't get distracted by the noise of your enemies. You got them everywhere. You got them in your job, on your job. You got them in your own household, in your own family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Someone might even be sleeping next to you. Don't get distracted. The enemy, anything compared with God is a minority. The enemy yes, is in a minority. Don't let them distract you from what God has called upon you to do for him when it comes to kingdom building. Yes, sir. Don't you know, I notice that in, in the pastoral field where pastors are jealous of other pastors. They're jealous of pastors who are doing something and they are not. What happens is, there are folks, they don't want to do anything, and they don't want you to do anything. But I tell you, if the Lord gives you health and strength, you ought to do all you can to be a part of what he's trying to do in bringing men and women, boys and girls, to salvation. And when I think about what he has put to my hand, put to my charge, I want to thank him. Lord, I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for bringing me. I thank you, oh Lord, for my troubles. I, I thank you for my struggles. Lord, I even thank you for my enemies. I thank you, oh God, because every time you got a way of lifting us higher, and higher, but you gotta hold out, you gotta hold on. Don't let the noise get your attention. Keep your eyes and ears focused on God Almighty. And I tell you, when you focus on Him, you have His presence. When you got His presence, you got power. When you got His presence, you got peace that passes all understanding. When you got His presence, you will make it. When you got His presence, you already make it. When you got His presence, you will well, and you can't make it. But you got to be conscious of his presence every step you take. Be aware of the presence of the Lord and watch how he will guide direct. When you're about to say something that you know you shouldn't, the Holy Spirit I touch you. Calm down. Take a deep breath. But you got to keep your focus on the Lord. So you don't have to be cussing folks out if you keep your focus on the Lord. And really be careful because, see, all you're doing is you're just fueling their situation. Somebody got to be Christ-like in this situation. But we have the presence. It'll make you stop doing something that you were planning to do. The Holy Spirit, his presence, will guide in. But you got to be aware, conscious, aware. Every step that you take, every thought you think, Every thought you thunk, you got to be conscious, aware of his presence. Because as long as I got Jesus, I got everything. As long as you got Jesus, you got everything that you need. But you got to acknowledge that he is there. And Lord, I can't do a thing until you come by. If you don't move, Lord, there is no movement. 
I got some folks up in here, I tell you, over their lifetime, and some just recently, they've been through some stuff. They felt, now I might be looking at some of you, felt like you were not going to make it. You knew it was all over. Whatever the situation was, you, you just knew. But even in your moments of doubt, you had sense enough to recognize the presence, the power, and the provisions of God Almighty. And the Lord made a change. The, the, the Lord worked it out. Could it be? We're praying for the Lord to work things out. But when I get to his house, the answer the blessing was waiting for me right here. When you get your mail, I don't know if you got if you had to go to the post, if you had to walk out of the box. Ain't no blessing happen to you go until you go get it. A lot of us don't want to go get our blessing. You gotta go get it. It's right there. But you gotta open the door of faith. I don't know what it is. I, I don't even. I just know the Lord has answered, and I'm trusting, believing that everything is all right. I, I, I'm really through this time. The, those of you who came here today, there's some stuff that you left home wasn't that good. But I want to speak peace yes, to your situation. To what it is. When you get back, yes, sir. that's it. <laughs> believe it. Before you get out your car, yeah. believe. You remember, Jesus healed a man one time, and, and, and the healing took place not, not while he was looking at Jesus, but when he turned. That's when he got here. Turn in. Go back. Whatever it is, I speak peace in your situation. Whatever it is, believe that the Lord has already worked it out. And don't wait to thank him after you get home. Don't wait to thank him after the deliverance after the healing, after the breakthrough. Thank him right now. Speak things as though they were. Praise him for what he's getting ready to do. Selah, stand still. Hush and listen what the Lord has to say. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Maybe there's somebody here. You've been complaining, but ain't nothing been happening. Because you haven't had the connection. The connection is to know Christ Jesus.